4, decomposition of sodium bicarbonate, analysis of systematic or uh, procedural errors. And this analysis is going to be a qualitative analysis. Uh, but what I am hoping to do through this analysis is to get us thinking about uh, how experiments are done and how biases appear, or maybe not how biases appear, but if a bias, is, a bias appears. And a bias just means, will the experiment tend to give numbers that are higher than correct or lower than correct? And so um, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to take a look at the class set of data, and it will be provided by the class or your instructor or some combination thereof. And if I look at my data set right here, uh, I did get 100%. Um, but if I look a little more closely, I actually got slightly higher than 100%. Uh, my hypothesis and the hypothesis that I'm asking you to consider for this lab is that there is a systematic bias in this experiment that makes it go higher than 100%. And we can uh, talk in class uh, with me or your instructor about what that bias might be. But, uh, but we're going to look for it and we're going to see. So if uh, 10 or 20 or 35 people do the same experiment and all of the numbers come at greater than or equal to 100%, that suggests that there's a systematic bias. If instead all of the numbers except mine come in under 100%, then that suggests to a systematic bias and that I have made a mistake in the lab, which I am open to. Um, <laughs> and uh, certainly as an experimentalist, uh, I, there's some error in some of the work that I've done. But uh, that's what we're going to do. And to evaluate this, we're going to look at the percent yields. And in fact, to go semi-quantitative, we're going to calculate the average let me go back to my numbers. We're going to calculate the average of everybody's percent. Um, and then we're going to calculate the standard deviations in everybody's percent. Um, and I guess the best way to do this now that I think about it is actually with the number, so uh, as not our final result, but including the extra digits that are not deemed significant, but will help our calculations. So we'll take uh, this number here with six digits, only, even though only three are uh, significant. We'll do the calculations and we'll get a number for the average for the class and the standard deviation. And let's say the average is 101%, but the standard deviation is plus or minus 5%. Well, that would suggest that there might be a bias towards higher numbers, but that it's hard to tell because the standard deviation is all over the place. However, let's take the opposite approach. Let's say we average them. We get an average of 97% or 97.1%, let's say, plus or minus 0.7%. That would suggest that the experiment actually gives low numbers as written and that it is significant. Because the standard deviation, even if we add it to once or twice, two standard deviations even, is less than 100%, which is the value that we're supposed to get. So that's as analytical as we need to get. You need to get the numbers for the average and the standard deviation, and you need to, need to talk about them in three to five sentences to analyze what you think.